All right, now that we've got our Chrome extension uh, displaying information to the user, we now want it to save. Um, so the next step is we want to take any input that's put into this notes field along with the information that we've scraped from the page and save that into Airtable. So I'm gonna select this button here because this is going to be my trigger. And I'm going to on click run a new flow. So I'll call this flow Airtable, save page info. And the first thing I wanna do, um, just a little bit of UX, when the user hits save, um, it'll, you know, I'm gonna take a second to actually save it to Airtable. So I'm gonna change the value of this button and that's the save to Airtable button. I'm gonna change the value to just say saving dot, 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 so that we have kind of a, a status state. So I've added a step here for making a call to the Airtable API. This is an Airtable tutorial, so I'm not gonna go into detail on exactly what I did here. Um, Drew has a really good tutorial on Airtable with Builder um, and a pattern as well. Um, but today I wanna focus on the Chrome extension part of it and just show you an example of what you can do. I will make um, this available in the page template um, so that uh, if you want to see a little bit more about what I did, um, you can see that. But um, basic you know, premise here is I'm making a call to the Airtable API. I'm building a JSON uh, package or a JSON object that I'm sending, and I'm sending my variables um, that we uh, are saving from our four action steps. So page title, OG image, page URL, OG description. And then I'm also sending the value of this notes field. Um, and then I'm storing the response in a variable called Airtable response so that I can um, perform an action on that. And I'm gonna use that in this next step. Um, I wanna add a uh, condition where I can compare values. So condition compare values is my action step. And the value that I wanna compare is uh, from a variable. So it's this Airtable response, as I mentioned. Um, so I'm gonna add a path and I wanna get records.length. Again, not gonna go into all the specifics of the Airtable API, but it returns a JSON object uh, called records. And I'm just checking to make sure there's at least one record uh, returned. I'm sending one record, so the response that I get back should be one record. So just doing a simple check to say, if that value is greater than zero, uh, then I wanna run a certain action, and if it's not, I wanna run another action. So I'm basically gonna create um, an action for a success state and an error state. So I'll say new flow, error table, success, and Airtable error. So if we go back to our save page info, I'm just gonna connect these. So on to, if true, Airtable success, if false, Airtable error. Um, on our success step, all I wanna do is set that value on the button. Again, remember, uh, in this interim step, we set it to saving. Now I'm gonna set this value to saved. And in my error state, I will just uh, add a message that says error saving to error table. So in my Airtable API call, I'm making a call to this Airtable that I created um, for this tutorial. And it's just got one table uh, called bookmark sites. And it's got a page title, a URL description, an image and notes. Um, so one field for each of our uh, elements that we're sending to the Airtable API. 
So now when I hit save to Airtable, it's going to run that action and we should see a success. Uh, I'm going to test this out now. Let's go back to our builder.com page and I'm going to refresh, load my Chrome extension. I'm going to type in a message or a note. Uh, this is a test note and I'll hit save to Airtable and it switched from saving to saved. So now let's check Airtable and there we go. We have a new record. We've got our page title, our URL, our description, the image that was pulled from the page and my notes. So we can test this on other pages as well. So let's try this on Stripe's website. So Stripe has uh, a title, a URL, and a longer description um, and an image. Um, so Stripe, I'll say, um, you know, use this for payment processing. And it's saved to Airtable. And let's do one more. Let's look at Gumroad. Gumroad's got all the elements that we need as well. Again, it's just pulling this from the meta tags. And I'll say, uh, great place for makers to uh, sell their products. And save that to Airtable. So now if we go back to our Airtable, base, we can see all of our uh, links are populating here. We've got our images uh, being pulled from each. And uh, that's a great, uh, great way to save these. So I've got my notes in there as well. And I'm starting to build up a set of bookmarks. So hopefully you can see um, how this could be used as a clipper to save it to somewhere like uh, Airtable. But Airtable is really just one example. Um, in the next uh, section, I want to show you how you can connect these to automation platforms. So how we could use this clipper to uh, trigger a Zapier um, Zap or how we could trigger an Integromat scenario. So uh, we will move on to that next.